sorry in advance. Um, got another sad diatribe to give you this week because last Monday, Lucinda and I had to say goodbye to one of our fur babies. And I, I know that I don't have to share every sad thing that happens in my life with you. And I don't, but I feel like this is one of the things I do need to share because, well, first of all, because he was kind of a character on the show, but also because this kind of grief speaks to the very heart of what we do here. So Loki first came into our life of his own accord. Uh, we'd been traveling for years, pretty much constantly with work. Uh, and we just, we couldn't keep pets at the time. But after years of living out of RVs and motel rooms, we'd settled into an apartment for a bit. And Lucinda took a job waiting tables in a nearby restaurant. So she's out back taking a smoke break one day when this little tuxedo cat comes trotting up and rubs against her legs and she falls in love. And so does he. She pets him a little and she goes to head back into work and the little cat follows her in and she puts him outside again. But like he spends the rest of the day trying to sneak back in the door anytime somebody opens it. And then when she gets off of work that day, he's there waiting for her. He follows her to the car and he just hops right the fuck in when she opens the door. So naturally, she calls me from the Walmart that she stopped at to pick up a litter box and some food. And she's like, we've got a cat now, by the way. And so we had a cat. And like every cat, he was the best cat. He was big and he was poofy and he was silly as all hell. He was also demanding as shit. And I could never say no to him. He loved to drink water out of a, a, out of a dripping tub. So when I get up in the morning, my first duty was to drip the tub for him. And my shower could wait until he was good and fucking done with that tub. Of course, when he was about seven years old, which is about the time we started this show, we learned that he was diabetic. So for years, we had to constantly give him insulin and check his blood sugar and monitor the acidity of his urine. And the more he had to rely on us for his health, the, the more we came to rely on him for ours. Then a couple of years ago, we got, he got a severe infection that left him with a vestibular disorder uh, that really fucked up his balance. It got to where he couldn't turn around without falling over. Now, that got better, but for several weeks, we had to do everything for him. We had to carry him back and forth to the food dish and the litter box and to bed every night. And, of course, he doesn't know what the fuck's going on. He doesn't know that he's sick. So, naturally, he just thought he got promoted, right? He thought he'd ascended to a level where we just carry his ass around on a Palantine for the rest of his life. And what's more, he seemed to think it was about fucking time. So, even after he more or less recovered, he demanded to be carried around a lot. And when I dripped water for him... I was now expected to lift him up and gently place him in the tub in front of it, wait until he's done, and then gently remove him at that point and place him back on the floor. And, and you can bet your ass that is exactly what I did. And Lucinda would say to me sometimes, she'd say, you know, you don't have to give him water every time he cries at you. And I would nod and I would say, yeah, but he's not always going to be around to give water to. See, that's the thing, because at times like this, it's tempting to be envious of your religious friends. It's tempting to wish that you could believe what they believe, to fool yourself into thinking that someday you'll get to cuddle with your lost pets again on the other side of the rainbow bridge, to spare yourself some shred of the overwhelming loss that you feel. But that's not how it works. You, you can't avoid bereavement with this one simple trick. Everything comes with a price, and the price of delusion, at least in this scenario, is regret. Look, part of having pets is losing pets. I get that. You go into every relationship with, a, with an animal with the, every intention of outliving them, right? And you hope you do. A, a person can at least comprehend losing their pet in a way that a pet could never comprehend losing their person. I, I would take all this sorrow and more if it meant sparing Loki some measure of it. And, and if you're brave enough to look their mortality in the eye, you'll remember to give them water in the tub every time they tell you to. You'll make time for them. You'll give of yourself more freely and more openly because the temporary nature of your relationship will be right at the forefront of your mind instead of buried deep behind a bunch of religious bullshit and motivated reasoning. I mean, as I've said a number of times before on this show, I don't think that most people who espouse theism really believe in an afterlife. Why would they be sad at funerals if they really thought that person was in heaven and they were going to get to hang out with them for eternity in just a few decades? But even if you could believe that, why would you want to? I mean, if I, I could actually live in a world where there's an eternal paradise and Loki gets to go to a great big bathtub in the sky, I would obviously choose that. But that's not the choice. The choice is to live in this finite world and admit it or live in this finite world and deny it. That's the decision tree. And ignorance has a cost. And it's not just a cost that you pay. The object of your love pays it as well. To cheat someone of their due grief is to withhold some measure of your love from them. As an atheist, you can look your loved one in the eye and you can say, yes, I know this is going to hurt me. 
I know that I'll be crushed with loss when you go. I know that my life will never be as full and as rich again once I say goodbye to you. And you're worth it. You're worth all that heartache. You're worth a lifetime of heartache. Hell, that's what it means to love something. The price for love is grief. And it's a bargain. 